ZBrush Madcaps for Comics Not Render. The next tactic you want to share with you adopts the same idea behind the creation of the light cap, but this time we're going to be using a matcap image based on an illustration. So we'll be editing the image of the matcap directly as we build it up. This approach is great if you want to create a material based on the style of your favorite comic. So I'll start by loading the Kepler character, so we already have that loaded. And the process should be exactly the same. Select a matte cap that you don't use much because we're going to be replacing it here. So we'll do, it uh, doesn't really matter, matte cap skeleton. And the image used by the matte cap will be overwritten until you restart ZBrush again. So he chose chalk. You know what? Let's go ahead and do uh, matte cap red wax. First thing we should do is dock the material palette over to the left, which we've already done. So again, the docking divider is over here. And the material, just grab this little white button and drag it over here. Open up the modifier subpalette and reset all of the attributes. So here's the modifiers here. Reset the cavity and transition. You know what? Uh, let's see. Cavity and transition to zero and the A intensity to one. So cavity transition to zero, A intensity to one, B intensity. All of these things look nice and zeroed out as well. So I think we're in good shape here. Uh, so find your reference image. Try to pick something that has all the shades and colors you would like to bake in your new matte cap. I loaded the illustration of Kepler and added to the spotlight. So this image right here, I'm going to go ahead and do Control plus 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 plus, and we're going to do like we did before. I'm going to go ahead and take this image right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Print Screen, and we'll go ahead and just grab this image here, and we're going to go Save As Comic Rendering. So say you're going into a comic book and you want to copy the style of the comic book coloring into your ZBrush material. So we're going to do this comic color JPEG, and then we're going to load this in the spotlight here. So we're going to control minus, 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 minus. There we go. So go to the texture palette, select your image, and add a spotlight. So we're going to go up here to the texture palette. We're going to go to import, and again, where we save that JPEG here, here's the comic color JPEG we saved. Now we have this texture imported, but not selected. So select it, hit this little plus, add to spotlight. And now this image right here is added to spotlight. You can turn spotlight on and off with shift Z and Z and enter the spotlight editing mode by pressing Z. Move the image to the side and your 3D model to the opposite side. <clears throat> so with this image here, you can click and move this thing around. We're gonna scale this down a bit. You're also gonna see the pure black in our image is kind of making a little bit of transparency. If you want to kill that a little bit, go to the intensity, click that, and then just change that intensity up a little bit, and that'll, or down a little bit actually, and that'll make your blacks not pure black, and we won't get that transparency issue. So now we're going to click the scale and just scale this down, and the opacity here, we can go ahead and crank this all the way up, so you can make sure you see it all nicely, and let's move this up here to the corner, you know, because we're going to be sampling the color on this image here. So let's kind of move this here, and then uh, hit Z to go out of spotlight mode. If you want to turn spotlight off, you can do Shift Z, and uh, Shift Z toggles it on and off, and then Z toggles on and off this manipulator mode here. So we'll just kind of move this here, and we'll move our guy over to here. So again, you have a, an image of a comic book that you like, go ahead and bring it into the spotlight, and then we're gonna recreate that look in here. Uh, most important thing to understand is that the image used by any matte cap is a capture of the environment, so the lighting and reflections, and so what you're gonna to need to do, if you wanna create a good matte cap, and remember, all these matte caps we have here are being driven by, under modifiers here, if we hover over this image here, it's being driven by spheres. So if you want to get a good representation of how your object is going to look, you know, take the, take the dome part. Like if you're doing Batman, take Batman's dome head and then just sample from his forehead and stuff, and that'll get you a better representation of the overall shading. Okay, so let's introduce the matte cap brush. Let me go ahead and hide this here. Uh, go to the tool palette and open up the tool menu and select the matte cap brush from the 2.5D brushes section. Now this is interesting. I had no idea this thing even existed when I first went through this. So, um, so go to the tool palette. So if we go here to the tool palette here, I'm gonna hit switch, and there is a matte cap button right there. Uh, ZBrush will tell you your current tool is in edit mode and ask if you want to exit edit mode to switch tools. We need to click on switch because we're going to be dropping. This model is no longer editable. See how we don't have edit mode turned on? So we are completely just drop to the document. It still has 2.5D information, so it'll still render correctly, uh, but we're in 2.5D mode. So now we're ready to start building our comic book matte cap. Begin by finding the color or tone that is more prominent or that covers the biggest area. In this case, the light blue is a pretty safe choice. So this area right here is the most prominent one. So this is gonna be like our base of our color, and then we're gonna be layering on top of that to create our specular and then our shadows. Click, once you've identified the primary color, click on it over your reference images. You'll see three things happen simultaneously. So uh, we're in ZBrush here and we have our matte cap selected. We're gonna click on that blue right there and you're gonna see it's gonna color our object with blue. And there you can see it's also updating this image here. And there is also a little dot here with a little arrow on it. 
The image used by the matte cap chalk has been overwritten by the color you choose, and the 3D model is not edible because we dropped it the canvas, it's filled with a blue color. Uh, because we've only chosen one color, there shouldn't be any shading but a flat color. If you see shadows, it's because the preview shadows are on. If I personally don't mind having them on, but if you want, you can turn them off in the render palette, preview shadows, object shadow slider. So the render palette here, let's go ahead and turn on BPR filters, uh, preview shadows, object shadow, is that what it was? Render palette preview shadows, object shadow slider is at 0.3. So if you want to turn that off, just change that down to zero and that'll be flat color. I'm not sure if he keeps this on or not, we'll go ahead and do, keep that at 0.3. After choosing the first color, I realize there should actually be a slightly darker blue that should be the primary and the light blue is just a really big soft specular. So really what he's saying is this color right here should be your base and this is just part of a soft specular fall off. To remove a marker, the point you created when you click from the MacCap is easy. Uh, hover over the area where you click to pick your color and you'll see a little red square. You can now hold down Alt and click to delete it. So here's the little marker here. Hold down Alt and tap and that'll go ahead and delete that marker. So I click on the new color here. So that's what he's saying should be the base is this base color here. And then click again on the lighter blue but this time I'm going to give the highlight some direction. So there's our base and then we're going to click on the lighter blue and give it the direction. Uh, to do that, you're going to click and hold and then drag in the direction you want. You're going to see the preview sphere updating this as you drag the red arrow. So if you click on this lighter one and then drag, you're going to see that's going to be the direction of the light. So if we go over here, so see how the direction's kind of coming in this way? We'll kind of put this over here to the right. Once you let go of the click, you should start to see some shading on the model. So this is a great way to create all sorts of matte caps, but we want to get the comic book look and feel, and the transition between colors is very smooth right now. Next step to learn is how to get a sharper transition between the colors, moving from diffuse light to a more specular point. Click again on your image reference to select another color. While clicking, drag the mouse to set the direction of the light. And then before you release, hold down control. And then when you hold down control, you're gonna see it's going to blur and sharpen. So in order to make a sharp area like this bright one right here, uh, we're gonna need to uh, kind of sharpen the contrast between there. Uh, so basically what he's doing is See how he has all these little points, these little matcap points in here, and they're all just kind of painted, just like little blobs on here. So he's creating a bunch of different samples in here and then holding that control to make those uh, little blobs happen. So we're gonna need to get it to look something like this. So let's go ahead and start. So basically, we're gonna click to set the direction. So we're gonna go ahead and do a uh, click on our object, and this is gonna be the dark purple, and then we're gonna hold that control and make this, see how we can kind of drag left and right. We can kind of make this a little bit sharper here and then now you can go through here and kind of set that direction here so if you want to again sample in that dark color hold down control and then drag right and then click again and kind of set this here we're just kind of painting the bottom edge of this with this uh, kind of mid purple here so let's go ahead and click in this dark area here and we're going to move this to that direction and then you can always click and then hold down control and then kind of sharpen that up again let's hold down alt get rid of that one there we go so there's kind of that dark splotch here. Um, if you want a black splotch, let's go ahead and click on the black here and kind of position this uh, along the side as well and then hold down control and make that kind of put this black splotch over here. So again, just kind of going around and creating it until you get something like that. So let's go ahead and just continue. Let's go ahead and do this dark one here. Hold down control and we'll just kind of put these blobs there. And then we'll go ahead and do one more here. And I'm not gonna do it perfectly, but you guys, you know, feel free to kind of go in here. <clears throat> okay, so now we have uh, all these kind of dark areas painted. Let's go ahead and get these light areas painted. Let's go ahead and do one of this light one here and then hold down control. And we'll go ahead and start brightening up this middle area here. Click and drag. And then this really bright one here, we'll go ahead and click in here, hold down control to really tighten that up. And then set that direction here. There we go. Um, now, there is dark on both sides of the face here, so we're gonna need to put some dark over here. So I'm gonna click over here, hold down control. Actually, we'll set the light angle, and then hold down control, and that'll kind of position that. And if you wanna reset that, just go over that little blob here. And then if we want black on the right side too, which we do have on here, we'll just click here, set that angle, go ahead and make that a little darker, and then, whoops, Alt-click that one if you make a mistake and then go ahead and put some black here on the side. If you want to do multiple blacks, black colors obviously, again, control drag, and then just go in there and set those lines there. Cool, something like that. And again, do this as much as you want to to kind of match that as closely as you can. 
Uh, doesn't look quite right yet, especially in the very smooth areas like the head and chest of the character, but don't give up. This is a great way to achieve some very interesting shading. Once you have used all the markers you need to describe the lighting of your reference images, you can move on to refining the matte cap. So that's what we're going to be doing now. Uh, first, check the image we have created in the matte cap texture. Just hover over it and you kind of see. Come on, there we go. And again, it's not perfect, but I'm going to go ahead and stop here just to hover the image. You might decide you need some extra markers. This is how his looks. Uh, the way the colors are mixed in the actual model is not too bad. This is why a good practice to create your matte caps based on the model you intended to use the materials with. So to refine this matte cap, we're going to open up the matte cap maker sub palette, the last one in the material palette. So with the material palette docked, which we did earlier, we're going to go all the way down to this matte cap maker at the very bottom. You have a series of attributes. The first one we're going to change is gloss. So this slider can help you sharpen the transitions between the markers or blur them a lot. So with gloss at 0.1, it's going to have a very, very soft transition and then as you crank this up it's going to have a more and more harsh transition between your markers that you've set. Then you have the refine attribute which I rarely use and when I say I I mean Pablo Munoz Gomez the guy who made this you're gonna see his name all over this thing um, and again if you want to follow along just look in the lower right hand corner zbrushguides.com for slash tutorials it's a zbrush comic style rendering. Uh, this kind of behaves as a burn saturate color slider so we have the refine attribute here so it's at 25 now as we crank this up it kind of does a little color burn and as we crank this down it kind of doesn't so we'll just go ahead and leave that at 25. Next you have intensity, saturation, and contrast so it sounds pretty self-explanatory since these attributes modify the matte cap image you could think of them as simply a levels, hue, saturation, and brightness contrast in Photoshop so if you want to crank up the intensity of your image it'll do that the contrast of your image and then of course the saturation of your image looks like contrast kind of kind of killed it there uh oh uh, then there is backlight but I haven't found it to be that useful I believe this is a slider to exaggerate the Fresnel effect of your image all right let's see contrast at zero one there we go so contrast back to one here um, backlight so here's the backlight at zero and then as you crank this up you're grabbing a little bit more of the Fresnel information on the side there uh, specular slider is quite interesting. At first, if you're just playing around with the slider, it might seem that it does the same as a gloss slider, but it's a different effect. It does blurs and sharpens the transition between the markers, but it also reduces the radius of each marker sample. So specular here, as we crank this up, it's taking all of the radiuses of the uh, sample here. So if we, if we hover over this, you're going to see how it's affecting the colors that we have. If we change the specular back down to zero, you're going to see there's our original kind of nice soft transition between them. As you crank this up, it's kind of bleeding out and making the transitions between them pretty harsh. Pretty cool. For instance, the following image has a gloss slider set at 0.3, which is quite diffuse, so nice and soft. Uh, the other one has a gloss value of 5, where you can start to see clear definition of, uh, between the colors. Now look at them as we take the first image with the gloss at 0.3, and oh, the specular should have been at 0. So here's gloss at 0.3. Here's the gloss with it cranked up. So now if we take the gloss at 0.3 and change the specular, we're kind of getting uh, something similar. Increase the specular to 500. There we go. So keep it the specular at 500 and slowly increase the gloss value. You can see the ZBrush is reducing the diameter of each sample marker. So there we go. It's kind of shrinking down those marker colors there. And then you've got the final settings. Uh, finally, you can play the matte cap falloff curve. So let's go ahead and crank that gloss up just a tiny bit, do 0.3 here. And then we have the matte cap falloff curve. You can open this up and you can create different little curve effects here to kind of dial in that exact look you want. Now, basic curve functionality, if you click, yeah, let's go ahead and reset this. So this is the default here. If you click in here, or if you click any one of these orange ones here, you can kind of lower and raise these to kind of get the effect of these end points here. And if you click anywhere in the middle, you'll, you'll create a new point. Um, if you click and drag, you'll set that new point to a different location. If you change this fall off slider, so we crank it all the way up here, you can change this fall off and that will sometimes harshen the transition between these points. If you want to make that a very uh, sharp transition, just click and drag off and then drag back on. Don't click and release. If you click and release, that deletes. So you can clear hit it, create a new one, click and click and drag off and release that'll delete it if you have a new one here see that soft transition if we click and drag and then drag back in without releasing that'll create a very harsh transition there so you can kind of go through here and kind of set up different curves here um, you're gonna see he's got this here you can do kind of a stepped here so if you kind of go up here and we'll kind of go here and we'll take this one off and on and that'll create kind of a sharp stepped transition here there we go kind of getting a cool look like so neat um, if we reset this one, we can kind of do this curve. We, we can invert this just by dragging this one up and then this one down. And that'll kind of give us an invert here. And now we can kind of play with an inverted look. 
So very dark shaded here. Cool. Uh, once you're happy with your matte cap, after you're doing all this stuff, go to the top of the material palette and click save, and that'll save your matte cap out. So when we have save um, the matte cap, so we go to ZBrush 4R8, Z materials, comic style rendering, which we copied in here. I'm just going to call this one test save. This is our material here. So now if we hit the comma key, you're going to see there's a test save Z material in there. Cool. So that'll just allow you to kind of bring that back in. Of course, you can add stepping and noise to all this stuff as we go. Um, once you're happy, go ahead and save it. And tip, if you want to have your brand new matte cap available every time you start ZBrush, you'll need to save it in the matte cap startup folder. So by default, we have uh, our startup materials that always show up every time we load up ZBrush. If you want it in the uh, light box here, that's where we saved it in the, go ahead and dial that in here. So program files, pixel logic, ZBrush 4R8, and then we got the Z startup. Uh, this is where if you wanted to start, you want the material to show up every time you start up ZBrush, drop them in here. And then if you want them to show up whenever you go into the light box, that's where you're going to go into the Z materials folder. And then you can make all the new folders in here you want to if you want to organize. And then you can just drop them in here. And then again, every time you hit the comma key, they'll be in your material here. Uh, made some good progress, but the next couple of methods are really going to take the comic saw to the next level. One last thing, if you want to delete all the markers you've created, go to marker in the top menu and click delete markers. So go to marker here and we can just hit uh, delete all. That'll delete all the markers that you've ever seen. 